go closer to this corner and I've got three shapes. I've got the top, I've got the front, and I've got the highlight shape. What I want to do is create a kind of 45 degree corner here. I want to start where if I double click it you'll see there's a node here that end of the highlight shape. I want a 45 or some kind of angle down across here. What I'll do to make things work out a little better is I'll put a guide down there so I can remember where I'm going to and uh, bring a horizontal guide over close to this node. It doesn't have to be exact. So what I'll do is bring the guide over close to that. Now, what I will do is take the front shape and add a node somewhere close to that point by double clicking on it when it's selected as a path and this is where the snapping becomes a bit of a, a pain. We should have actually one more grid here because that's where I want the node to end up. It's there. Then I select my top shape and again add a node. Sorry move that node over there, drag that node down, and then take my highlight shape and just drag that node down. Okay. Now if I hide the things you can see the effect I'm getting here. It's kind of a chamfered corner. Alright, now if I turn the guides on again, I can still have the horizontal one. I'm going to have to kind of for the sake of time, recreate the other guides that I needed, which were these two. Again, highlight the front shape, create a new node, and bring that one down to there. Highlight the top shape, create a new node, drag it down to that same point, and then take the highlight shape and drag that node down. Again, got my chamfered corner, two of the same, and I will now do a little bit of work on the front face of this. What I'm going to do is duplicate this shape double click it because it's a path, hit control J or do all I'm doing is a path dynamic offset dynamic offset control J grab that one remaining node and drag it in slightly I will hit F1 to select it probably uh, just for now we'll make it a darker color and then we're going to turn that into a gradient we will put the darker edge up here, the lighter edge at the bottom, and what I'm going to do actually is change that gradient slightly. I'm going to edit the gradient because now it's black to transparent, or very dark gray to transparent. I'm going to change that endpoint to be a very, very light gray, almost a white, and make it opaque. So I want it to be light at the bottom. You'll see why in a second. So it kind of looks like almost a hollow box now. And I will again take that shape, duplicate it. I have to turn it into a path using object to path. And now I can double click it, hit control J for the offset. I'm going to offset another shape slightly inside of that one. Hit F1 if you want to see it clearly, give it some other color say a medium gray and you can see I've made kind of a face. Now what I'd like to do is actually uh, make that a gradient. I'll pick one of the ones I used before. Again, once I pick it I'm going to duplicate it so that I don't screw up what I've already done. And I'm going to change the grip points to be probably uh, 
I think dark on the bottom, light on the top. Kind of give the effect I want. So there, I've got kind of my front thing. We'll do a little bit of um, just a little accent here. Probably actually should, yeah, we'll just do a little bit of a quick and dirty uh, kind of feature. What we'll do is a rounded rectangle like this. Probably make it a bit smaller and a bit, a bit longer. Now, again, I'm going to put a gradient on this thing. So we'll bring up the fill and stroke dialog box for this object. I will make it black, then hit the gradient button. Edit the gradient and change the other stop to a nice light gray or almost a white. And fully opaque. And hit the tool and again. See, in this case, everything I'm drawing is kind of drawn with the light coming from the top. So you always shade, if things are kind of convex into the object, I want the top dark and the bottom light. And you'll see, if I bring it up in here, you'll see what I'm going for. is kind of a uh, indent or a hole in the front of that thing. Okay, so I will then duplicate this a couple of times. I'll select them all, bring up the alignment dialog box, and I will distribute them equally to get it looking decent. I can group them, so I can just drag them around as one object. And cheat a little bit here, and I'm just going to cant them a little bit, not too much, just with that stretching uh, skew tool. And there, I've got kind of a, a nice drive box with a kind of little grillage on the front. You can dress it up with some buttons. Um, and now for um, things to look a little bit nicer, I'm going to group that. I'm going to duplicate it over here. And what I'll do is I'll ungroup it again and choose Path Union. If these are all paths, ah, I still got a grouped object in here. Now I can take all these, path, union, becomes one solid block. I will make that black, not gray. I'll explain why in a minute. I will add some blur to it and drag it over top of my object. Hit page down. Sorry, I'm hitting this page down on the blur. and put it below, and actually I'll move it a little bit down like this, and you can see what I've got is kind of a shadow under that. So now you can put that on a web page or do whatever you want with it. Um, the reason I say the shadow should be black, if it's too dark uh, and you want to lighten up the shadow, make it black and change the opacity of it. If you make it gray, uh, when you put it onto a different background color uh, of a web page or something, that gray will look really funny. Um, it works much better if you use black and then reduce the opacity. So there you go. Hopefully um, you can use that to draw some other objects, uh, those concepts, and, um, and uh, maybe do some graphics uh, of this type for yourself. Thank you very much for watching.